Mr. District Attorney, champion of the people, defender of truth, guardian of our fundamental rights to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Mr. District Attorney is brought to you by two famous Bristol Myers products, Vitalis and Sal Hepatica. Vitalis for hair that's well-groomed, Sal Hepatica for the smile of health. Vitalis, Sal Hepatica. And it shall be my duty as district attorney not only to prosecute to the limit of the law all persons accused of crimes perpetrated within this county, but to defend with equal vigor the rights and privileges of all its citizens. case of one slip meant death. In the spring, a young man goes to the circus, and that includes your district attorney, Harrington, and Miss Miller. As our story begins, they're busy with popcorn, peanuts, pink lemonade, and watching the show. Boy, what's this now, Miss Miller? What? Boy, did you ever see tigers like that? Where, Harrington? Which ring? In the center. Hey, who is that guy, Chief? He's great. Uh, I was just looking at the program, Harrington. Oh, here it is, number 24, presenting Chris Kane and his death-defying dance of the wild beast. Oh, gee, they're beautiful, aren't they? Yeah. The tigers? Uh-huh. Yeah, watch Kane's footwork, Miss Miller. That's what's beautiful. Yes, yes, isn't it? Hey! Ooh. Hey, just see that one snarl at him? Yeah. Boy, they ain't kidding. <laughs> Uh, it's the finish of the act, Miss Miller. Oh. He's supposed to light a cigarette in front of that tiger. What? Yeah, yeah, the big one, Miss Miller. Look. Oh, I don't want to look. Watch him, watch him now. He keeps getting closer to the tiger. Oh. And all of a sudden, he lights that cigarette right in his face. Well, I'm just as glad I'm up here, aren't you, Harrington? <laughs> yeah, now, <laughs> Chief. <laughs> hey, hey, there he goes. Yeah. Watch him, Miss Miller. Yeah. Yeah. That tiger got him. Oh, no, no. Hey, let's get down there. This crowd might get out of hand. Come on. Now, let's get this straight. You're Kane's assistant, you said? Yes, sir. Jimmy Parsons. Okay, Jimmy, you stay right here. Who are you? Uh, uh, my, my name is Drew. Carol Drew. Hmm. Is Kane dead, you know? Yes, ma'am. He's dead. Oh, how horrible. What are you doing the act, Miss Drew? Uh, uh, Carol's not with us, sir. Hmm? She's an aerialist. Oh, I see. Well, you don't need to hang around that little lady. District Attorney just said those in the Kane Act had to stay. Oh, but I, I want to stay. You see, I... She's I... with me. Oh, here you are, Harrington. Yeah, I thought I'd better stick close to the cage, Chief. Mm -hmm. I did what you said. Nobody has touched it. Good. Uh, will you bring Mrs. Kane over here, please, Miss Miller? Yes, sir. I'm sorry, Mrs. Kane. This won't take long, I know. Mrs. Kane, I... I don't know what to say. It's just awful. Madura got him. Hmm? I saw from the entrance it was Madura. Madura? Uh, the cat, Mr. Harrington. Oh. oh, but Mr. Kane slipped. I saw him. What did you say? Uh, this is Carol Drew, Chief. She's part of a trapeze act. Oh, yes. And you saw Mr. Kane slip, Miss Drew? Well, I, I'm sure he did. I, well, I was watching because I was looking for Jimmy. Yes, yes. That was my impression, too. You know, we were in a box just over there to the left. I want to have a look inside that cage, Harry. Yeah, right, Chief. Mrs. Kane, I... I know this must be a tough time to talk, but about this tiger. Is it vicious especially? They're all vicious. My husband's act was no fake. Oh, of course not. I just meant... Uh, Medora is faster than the others, Mr. Harrington. Uh -huh. You have to watch her every minute. I can't understand it. I just can't. Well, can't I get you a chair, Mrs. Kane? I I'll be all right. Thank you. Oh, Harrington, will you come in here a moment? Yeah, right with you, Chief. Excuse Ms. me. Miss Drew, I think if you could get Mrs. Kane's glass... Yeah, watch your feet there, Harrington. Hmm? There's something on this canvas I don't like. What's that, Chief? Right here. Right in front of the perch that tiger was on when it happened. Huh? Here, do you see it? Hey. Hey, Chief, that feels like grease. Yes, it is a grease of some sort. And only in front of this perch. Well, I... Now I'm sure Cain slipped in front of that animal. Oh, brother. Come on, let's see if we can't find out why. Jimmy. Yes? Jimmy, this is... This is awful to think about now. At a time like this, I mean... 
But... Think about what? Us. Well, the show will have to go on, Jimmy. You know that. And, and everybody knows you know the act. Well, you can handle the cats just as good as Mr. Kane did. Oh, wait. But we have to think about it, Jimmy. What, why, if you do the act, that'll mean more money. And, and then we Honey, can... Honey, please, wait. listen. I know we've waited, baby. Golly, I know every minute of it. Even before I went over to see you. Well, then. I, I don't want to do the act. What? Oh, don't get me wrong, baby. It isn't that I can't. It's... Well, don't you see? The cats belong to Velma now. All of them. Velma? Mrs. Kane. Well, sure they do, Jimmy, but... Well, my goodness, she can't do the act. She isn't even circus. I know that. Jimmy Parsons, what are you trying to say? You're like a little boy. Velma got... likes me, Carol. She... Oh, for Pete's sake, I don't have to spell it out for you, honey. She's in my hair. She's been that way for months. Mrs. Kane. Yeah, don't you see? If I did the act now with her cats and everything, it'd be worse than ever. Much worse. Oh, I didn't know. I had I, I had no idea at all. I didn't want to worry you. Mrs. Kane. I, I just can't believe it. Don't let her fool you, Carol. She's tough. Yeah, I heard that once. One day in the commissary, someone said... Someone said she'd been arrested or something a long time ago. But... Come in. Uh, Jim, I... Oh. Uh, come in, Mrs. Kane. You, uh... You know Carol Drew, I think, with the Parkers. You'll forgive us, won't you? Jim, I want to talk to you alone. Well, I... Uh, yes, of course. Is the phone connected in your dressing room, Carol? Uh, yes, it is, Jimmy. Room 72. I'll call you, okay? Yes, please do. Uh, um, Mrs. Kane, I, I want to say... Some other uh, time, my dear, if you don't mind. Oh, I'm sorry. Excuse me. Do you want to sit down? Sorry if I was rough with your little friend, Jim. It happens there's a lot to think about. If there's anything I can do, any way I can help, I oh, wish Oh, for you'd... the love of heaven, Jimmy, don't you start to. I look lousy and black and crying makes my mascara run. Sorry. Just glad our farm's near here. I can get away from the sympathy routine. Sit down, will you? You uh, said you wanted to talk to me, Mrs. Kane. Oh, I see. See? The Mrs. Kane routine... You know, Jimmy, in all my life, I never... No, I'll be darned if I will. It's getting late, Mrs. Kane. But darned if I'll sit here trying to think of how to work this. And... Is it that girl, Jimmy? The one that just went out here? Carol? I don't care. I don't care about anything, Jimmy. Not anymore. Look at me. But, but I... Look at me, I said. Do you think this is for last? I think you'd better... Ever since you got here. Ever since you smiled for the first time... Ever since I saw the way your hair falls over your eyes when you laugh. Since I watched you walk. Cut it out. Don't talk Ever since that. I loved you, Jimmy. Loved you so hard. So far down deep inside me, it aches and pains like it was going to kill me. Jimmy, please, I'm dying with the pain. Jimmy, please. You'd better go. Please, dear Lord, please. I'm sorry, Mrs. Kane, but it's just no good. It isn't, and it never could be. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'm going to find Carol. Jimmy... Raven oil, odorless, tasteless, colorless. That's a new one on me, Kate. Mm. Raven oil? I've heard of it before, Harrington. It's um, a, well, it's like a baby oil. I think it has a number of uses. Yeah, it's including murder, it seems, Miss Miller. Oh, you think that'll stand up, Kate? Well, not the way the case shapes up now. Oh, it's murder, all right. There's no doubt of it. You take this fact alone. Chris Kane had done that cigarette trick in front of that particular tiger for three years. That's right. And the trick, obviously, is largely a matter of footwork. That's right, too. Then one night, there's a neat patch of this raven oil right in front of that tiger's perch. Yeah. Right where Kane does his stuff. Exactly. So, what's the result? He starts the trick, slips on this oil, and the tiger claws it. Mm. Well, that's murder. Well, I see all that, of course, Chief, but... Uh... I was just trying to think who could have done it. Yeah, that's quite a thought, Miss Miller, quite a thought. Oh. Something we'll all have to think about. Yes, and do something about. How long is the circus scheduled to stay in the auditorium, Harrington? Not long, Chief. It moves on Friday. Friday. It's not much time, is it? Well, we'd better get to work, and fast. <laughs>
It's late, Carol. I'd better go back to my hotel and let you get some sleep. Have you started packing yet? I will tonight. And, and, and tomorrow you'll... Leave. I'll tell her right after the matinee. Jimmy. Oh, Jimmy, I'm scared. Oh, baby, no. There's nothing to be scared about. It, it's best this way. Honest, it's best. Well, I know all that. It, it's just that everything's so mixed up. It won't be for long. You'll see, honey. I'll get a job just like that. I know. Well, gee, smile then or something. I'm going to miss you, too. Oh, you know? Jimmy. Oh, Carol. Oh, gee, honey, don't cry. I can't help it. Oh, that's the old, old why we're in the army. I used to think about us being together. And, and how you do the cat act someday. And, and me with the part. And, and now it's all different. Oh, now, baby. Oh, I... I'm just sorry, I guess. Sure you are. Hey, you'd better get some sleep, young lady. All right now? I'm fine. Miss Drew, there, damsel. Hey. I, I, I'm i listening, Mr. Parsons. You're supposed to smile, dopey. Oh? I'm listening, Mr. Parsons. That's better. I just want to tell you, fair lady, that I... that I love you. Jimmy, wait. Very, very much. Nice. Jimmy. Oh, Jimmy. Jimmy. Oh, Jimmy. Okay, come in. Jimmy, I... Mrs. Kane. Does he usually stay in your hotel room until now? What? Don't give me that wide-eyed stare. I've been waiting in the street. What do you want? That's a neat question coming from you. All right, I'll give it to you straight. I want Jimmy. I don't want to talk like this. What's more, I want you out of my way, kid. Is that clear Mrs. enough? Mrs. Kane, I will not stand for you to come in here I'm and talk talking. to me. I'm talking. There's a show organizing in Texas this week. They need another wire girl, and I can get them to take Mrs. you on. Mrs. Kane. Just to show you my heart's in the right place. I'll stake you to the fair. Oh, please, Mrs. Kane, won't you try to understand? Oh, I understand, kid. Oh, sure. Now, do you go? Do you get on that bus tomorrow and that's the end of you? Well, you must be crazy. Do you really think you can get Jimmy that way? Do you go? He loves me. Doesn't that mean anything to you? Jimmy loves me. Shut up. And you think you can get rid of me and have more to yourself? You're crazy, I tell you. Shut up. He isn't staying with you, Mrs. Kane. Don't you know that? He's leaving. He's leaving, do you hear? He's getting away from the whole thing. What did you say? You heard me. Jimmy isn't yours. Well, why, you couldn't have his little finger. He loves me, do you hear me? He loves me. You shut up, you crazy little fool. You don't know what love is. And you think you could take him away from me? You? He hates you. Did you hear that, Mrs. Payne? He hates you. Rotten little rat. You couldn't have Jimmy if you were to... Get away. Nibbling little idiot. Hey, no! Hey, go, go! You fool. Let's see if he loves you now. <laughs> didn't know why she was afraid. Dead. We'll hear the next development in this case in just a moment. But first, some tips for the man who wants to look his best. If you're on the heavy side, wear a double-breasted suit. You look thinner. If you're short, wear a striped suit to make you look taller. And whether you're short or tall, keep your dry, unruly hair looking neat. You'll make a better impression. That is, if you keep your hair under control in a natural, masculine way. So be sure to use Vitalis. Because Vitalis contains natural vegetable oil. No mineral oil. No slick, greasy look. And remember, Vitalis does lots more besides make your hair look right. In fact, Vitalis and the famous 60-second workout brings you an extra advantage so many hair preparations cannot give you. Vitalis and workout stimulate your scalp, makes it tingle all over, feel just grand. The Vitalis workout also routes embarrassing loose dandruff. 
helps retard excessive falling hair. And due to the natural vegetable oils in Vitalis, eliminates the irritation of dry scalp. Better try Vitalis, mister. Scalp tingling Vitalis is available at drug counters everywhere. To look your best tomorrow, get a bottle of Vitalis tonight. <laughs> Back to Mr. District Attorney. Shut the dressing room door, will you, Harrington? I don't want any of the performers in the halls to see us. Yeah, right, Chief. The Parsons boy is out in the arena. Yeah, I checked again, Chief. He's standing just at the entrance way. Well, we'll wait here for him then. We'll talk to him first and then move right down the list. Hey, Harrington. Yeah, Chief? What'd you. What? What are they doing? Raven oil. Yeah. Almost amateurish, wouldn't you say? The boy's obviously all packed. Yeah, and a half-empty bottle of that raven oil tossed behind the makeup stand. <laughs> I'll be a son of a gun. Yeah, be careful. I'll pick it up in my hack. Yeah, boy, this one's going to end fast, huh, Chief? <laughs> I thought we'd be questioning half the circus before we're through. Yeah, better put Brophy next to the boy. You can't take any chances now. Yeah, all right. Uh, that's the phone, Chief. You want to let it ring? No, I think we'll answer it. Anything concerning James Parsons is of interest to us now. Yes? Hello, I'm calling the district attorney, please. Is he near that extension? Oh, yes. Go ahead, Miss Minnie. Oh, Chief, I've been tracing you through every dressing room over there. Well, we won't be long. We've just made quite a discovery. But, Chief, the teletype just came in. The squad's on the way there now to her hotel. Teletype? What, Miss Miller? I don't understand. Well, the report just came through, Chief. Carol Drew's been murdered. <laughs> Five. Sixty. All right, take it. I'm sorry you feel this way, Mrs. Kane. You're quitting, aren't you? You got your salary, haven't you? Go on and get out. If I can do anything, I mean it. For I... me? You've done enough to me, boy. All I want to do now is to get out of here. When I slam that dressing room door, that's the end. You're taking the animals, Mrs. Kane? Yeah. Madura, especially. We'll go back to the farm together. Me and that cat. I should think after the accident, uh, after what Medora did, you'd... Uh... I'd what? Uh, nothing. I'd better go. More company. I must be getting popular. Come in. Excuse me, Mrs. Kane. I just... Uh, it's okay, Chief. He's in here. Uh, what do you want? Wait out here, Brophy. Sorry to disturb you, Mrs. Kane, but maybe you'll be glad it's all over. Come on, Parsons. Let's go. Let's go? But I... We have a car outside, Parsons. We leave as quietly as possible. Leave? But, but what for? I don't get it. For murder, Sonny. Come on, put on your hat. All right. All right, we'll start again. Now listen to me, Parsons. Listen, I said... Look at the district attorney, Parsons. I told you. You've told us nothing. Now, thank you, Parsons. Chris Kane was killed because someone put oil in front of that tiger. Raven oil, Parsons. Raven oil that we found in your dressing room. Yeah, where'd you get it? Let me go, please. Mm -hmm. Carol's dead. Can't you understand that? We understand it, all right. You were in her hotel room last night, not ten minutes before they found her body. Do you hear me? You were there. I don't know. Oh, Oh, it's getting late, Chief. Well, all right, all right. Where is Mrs. Kane, Miss Miller? Oh, uh, now at yes. the farmhouse, Chief. But she and her husband kept the tigers in this place just outside of town. She'll make a statement, I think, Harrington. Suppose you go out there and get it. Right. You'd better go, too, Miss Miller, to take it. Oh, oh and send Dorothy in here, will you? Yes, sir. Jimmy and I aren't through, not by a long shot. All right, Parsons, we'll start again. <laughs> Crack, Miss Miller. Huh? <laughs> Boy, he's stubborn, though. I'll see. Is that the house? That uh, second driveway, Harrington. You see that mailbox? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I should have stopped at the squad room, I guess. Mike's fixing my gun. Is this it? Yeah, right here. Hmm. Hope we don't have to ask her to come downtown. No. Oh. That dame's been through a lot. She sure has. Got your notebook? You kidding? Go on, ring the bell. I did. She must be here, Harrington. The door's open. Mm -hmm. mm. Come on, Mrs. King. Come on. This is no time to take a bath. 
Farrington, I don't think she's here. Hmm? Do you hear anybody? Not a thing. Come on. My book going in an open door ain't so bad. Come on. All right. Mrs. Kane? Anybody home? Mrs. Kane? That's funny. Come on, let's look around. Okay. Oh, uh, that must go to the kitchen. Yeah. Mrs. Kane? Hey! Anybody home? That's strange, isn't it? <laughs> House wide open, not a soul here. Okay. Oh, where's that door go, Harrington? Basement, I guess. Uh, Come on, let's have a look. Yeah. <laughs> Harrington! Oh, for the love of... Miss Miller, get back. It's a tiger. No. Don't yell, Miss Miller. Move slowly. Go on. Get over in the corner. Harrington, it, it stopped. It's in the corner, Miss Miller. Okay. Now, don't even breathe. He's, he's coming closer. Get behind me. Harrington. Slowly, Miss Miller. Give me that chair. I hope this is the way they do it. Now, you left the hotel at 10 after 12. Are you sure? I I don't know. You just said it was 10 after 12, Parsons. Now, make up your mind. Hello. No. Yes, yes, go on, Brophy. You're in the lab now. What? Are you sure? No, no, that's all right. Get a car and meet me downstairs. Yes, at once. Parsons? Yes, sir? I owe you an apology, Parsons. Come on, son, I'll explain in the car. Harrington, I think I'm going to... For the love of Mike, don't pass off Miss Miller. <laughs> Watch him, Harrington. Look, there's something in the hall. Watch him. Easy. Easy does it. If he turns that head again, we make a break for the door. All right. Easy. Madura! It's Mrs. Kane! Keep your voice normal, Miss Miller. In the kitchen, Mrs. Kane. Madura! You fools. Didn't you know? Oh, you fools. Can you control him, Mrs. Kane? Who will control Madura? Watch me. Get him, Madura. Get him. Harrington. Watch it, Miss Miller. Keep behind me. Harrington, please. Madura, you killed him, Madura. It's all right, Miss Miller. It's all right. Take Mrs. Kane, Harrington. Parsons is in the car. Mrs. Kane? Yes, for murder. Easy, Miss Miller. Easy. It's all right, Harrington. Let's go. Your district attorney will return in just a moment with an explanation of the clues that led to the arrest of Mrs. Kane. But first, about something that concerns almost everyone listening. Whether you're a bank president... Or a bank clerk. A shop foreman... Or a shop apprentice... A secretary... Or a bookkeeper... No matter who you are, what you do, where you live, the chances are you two wake up now and then feeling sick and headachy because you need a laxative. So better heed this good advice. When you feel like that, take Sal Hepatica. Yes, take Sal Hepatica. For a sparkling glass of this famous saline when you get up brings quick, gentle relief, usually within an hour. That means you don't have to feel miserable all day, waiting until night to take the laxative you needed in the morning. In addition, Sal Hepatica helps sweeten an upset stomach by reducing excess gastric acidity. So keep a bottle of Sal Hepatica handy, remembering this caution used only as directed. Then, any time you need a laxative, see how much faster you feel better thanks to gentle, speedy Sal Hepatica. Here is your district attorney. Now, this was a case of double murder, ladies and gentlemen, and under questioning, Mrs. Kane has admitted both crimes. Boy, she was a weird one, wasn't she, Chief? Yes. She knocks off her husband so she can make a play for young Jimmy Parsons. Then when he says no dice, she shoots his girl. And darn near finishes us with that tiger, Harrington. Oh. Golly, I feel shake when I think about well, it. Well, Mrs. Kane is obviously a mental case, really. A woman so deranged by her emotions that murder meant little or nothing to her. 
As we know now, she put the oil in front of the tiger's perch, knowing that her husband would lose his footing in it and be killed. And then she plants the oil bottle in Jimmy's dressing room. Oh, brother. Yes, she did, Harrington. Fortunately, she acted emotionally rather than with the deliberate count of the trained criminal. She planted the bottle of oil in Jimmy's dressing room, yes, but in her emotional state, fingerprints never occurred to her. And it was her prints on the bottle of oil that did it, huh, Chief? Yes, exactly, Miss Miller. As soon as Brophy called with a report from the files in Washington, there was no doubt about it. Mrs. Kane had a criminal record of some years standing, and her fingerprints very clearly matched those on the bottle. Yeah, to say nothing of the gun, Chief. The one she shot Carol with was right there in her house. <laughs> Oh, hey, what about next week? Well, friends, before telling about next week's case, we have a man with us tonight who has something of unusual interest to tell us. And it's my pleasure and privilege to introduce our sponsor, Lee Bristol of Bristol Myers Company. Mr. Bristol. Thank you, Jay. Fellow radio listeners, from time to time during the past five years, on this and on other radio programs, you have heard your favorite stars and announcers break away from the usual radio script to make special pleas for the Red Cross, for the recruiting of nurses, for treasury bonds, for employment of veterans, and many other subjects that affect the lives of practically all of us. Perhaps you have wondered how these announcements came about. Actually, the announcements you have heard have been an endeavor on the part of radio artists, their sponsors, and the networks and stations which bring them to you to provide a public service for the American people. It has been an effort to employ all the media of communication to inform Americans everywhere in the world of the problems facing their country. Here, we are carrying them through the great medium of American radio. It had to be an organized effort because of the number of people involved and the great number of radio programs. All this difficult work of organization was done by the Advertising Council. It would take me too long to recount the fruitful results of what you the listeners have done as a result of the appeals made on commercial radio programs. All that you needed were the facts, and then you acted. All through the war, and now in the disturbed peace that has followed. Naturally, like any advertiser, we, like, we try to sell our products on our radio programs. But in our newspaper, or even in our newspaper and magazine advertisements, but on this the fifth anniversary of the Advertising Council. We are continuing as best we may to keep Americans informed about the problems that most vitally affect them. We believe in the American system of broadcasting, which exists nowhere else in the world. We wish to preserve this system, but far more important, we wish to preserve the freedom of the individual man, which has made our country the great nation it is. This voluntary, cooperative undertaking expresses for you and for me the very essence and spirit of America. Thank you, Lee Bristol. And next week, ladies and gentlemen, our story is the case of perpetual care, and I invite you to join us for it. Until then, thank you, and good night. names of all characters in the night's dramatization are fictitious, and any resemblance to names of living persons or actual places is purely coincidental. Our stars were Jay Justin in the title role, Len Doyle as Harrington, and Vicki Vola as Miss Miller. The music was under the direction of Peter Van Steeden, and the authors were Edward Byron and Robert Shaw. And remember, Vitalis for hair that's well-groomed, Sal Hepatica for the smile of health. Now, Bristol Myers, makers of Sal Hepatica and Vitalis, suggest you stay tuned for the big story... We invite you to hear the Alan Young Show on Friday night and join us again next week at the same time for Mr. District Attorney. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company.